Hello and welcome to another Betfred Sports video right here in the Quest Media Network studio. Now, of course, there's only one place to start today, and that was the Manchester Derby on Sunday. Peter, Derby Day demolition, Manchester City 4, Manchester United 1. A capitulation, an embarrassment. Roy Keane summed it up perfectly. Yeah, well, Roy Keane has grabbed all the headlines this morning with his um, uh, typically forthright opinion. Um, the vast majority of people will agree with what he said. Mm. Um, five or six Manchester United players shouldn't wear the shirt anymore. Um, he also um, said that they, were, they weren't running back, they weren't running for each other. Mm. Um, I mean, my view is that Manchester City played extremely well and United played extremely poorly. Uh, and that's what happens. Uh, it could have been six or seven or even eight now, yeah. or eight one. Um, I mean, that was a good goal by Sancho. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that right. it was. Um, but the, the bottom line was that the, it was men against boys. It was mm -hmm. kind of embarrassing for the red half of Manchester. Um, Ragnik, to me, looks like a supply teacher. <laughs> he basically, no one's going to try for him because he knows he's not going to be there next year. Yeah. And all this stuff about, oh, he's in the consultancy capacity and he's looking out for the players and all that, that won't matter at all. Yeah. They're going to bring in a new manager, a young manager, who's going to get stuck into them um, and start shaking out that club because, quite frankly, if it carries on, there'll be relegation fodder next yeah. year with performances like that. It was an absolute horrendous performance. It was a complete and utter yeah. joke. Um, you just did not see United getting back into it. And all this stuff about Ronaldo being in Portugal, well, that doesn't wash with me. Um, I know from my involvement at football clubs, it's the medical staff who say whether people are fit enough to play, yeah. not the players. Uh, they can have their say. Um, well, it goes back to player power again, doesn't it? The players have too much power at football clubs these days. Like I said, then Ralph Ragnick looks like a supply teacher. They're walking all over him. They know that they don't have to play for another contract or a position next season under him because he will be going. Yeah, you say it's player power, but it, it, the player power works in the favour of Manchester City and Arsenal and other teams on the up. Um, it's just not happening at Manchester United. Mm. They're not that different to the other players, except the other t other clubs want have got players who want to play for the shirts. Yeah. Um, Manchester United, they just looked... They, they, they were... Well, the shambles. They were they were. It, it's hard to form words to say how poor they were. But there was no reaction when they went 3-1 down. Yeah. Um, there wasn't much reaction when they went 2-1 down. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was just a horrendous performance. Um, it just just going through the motions. Yeah. Um, Fred, I can't really, it's hard to put into words how poor he was. Um, Do you know the biggest disappointment for me yesterday? Marcus Rashford coming off the bench. You can have a little bit of uh, influence, can't you, when you come off the bench. In that situation, you can make a bit of an impact. He was jogging around. He looked like he'd been playing for the first 70 minutes and he was knackered. Yeah. He's come off the bench. Well, Rashford, for me, should have started, frankly, um, instead of Ilanga, because you need experience in a game like that. Um, and he, he could have ran hard at those... Um, uh, City defenders and made yeah. more of an impact than Ilanga. But when he did come on, you're right, he looked like he, he felt he shouldn't have been on the bench to start with and he wasn't going to put much of a shift in mm. um, to try and change things around. Um, but Fernandes was another one. He was uh, giving it large to the referees, per usual, mm. um, not concentrating on his game. Um, Pogba, <laughs> I mean, it's... Was it what position was Pogba supposed to be playing? He looked, he's just chasing shadows all game. Unbelievable, he like a lumbering giant who was yeah. just going to lose the ball at any one, any time he yeah. got it. I mean, City yeah. were all over him. Some of the pressing from that City team was extraordinary. Yeah. There was like when United did get possession, which was very rare, the City players were at them two and three players who just weren't going to let them get any composure together. Mm. Um, I mean, men against boys is a good way of putting it. I know that's a cliche, but that's the top and bottom of it. I mean, Betfred now have City one to four um, to retain the title. Liverpool um, eleven to four. Um, they just etched out as they often do a win against West Ham. Yeah. Um, and the top four race, well, United predictably enough are drifting. Um, Chelsea one to sixteen. I think that's a given. That. Um, Arsenal one to two now, so they're odds on to get that top four slot. Mm. Uh, United ten to three, the same as Spurs, and we know what problems Spurs have got. United play Spurs next. Um, West Ham sixteen to one, and Wolves sixty six to one for the top four finish. 
Wolves have drifted slightly now. Yeah, not in a great run of form. But as Peter said then, United's next Premier League fixture comes against Spurs this weekend. However, Spurs do play this evening at their stadium. They're hosting Everton. Everton, of course, fighting relegation this season. So, for Antonio Conte's side, this is a huge game. They've got to pick up the three points to keep hope of a top four finish. Well, they have. Um, that, that game will be significant for both of them at Old Trafford on Saturday. Uh, United against Spurs. Uh, Betfred have United even, so we think they will bounce back. Um, and they do seem to be playing, apart from Sunday, against, better against better teams. Yeah. Um, so that will be a inter very, very interesting fixture. Um, so we've got Betfred have United evens to uh, pick up all three points. Spurs 11 to 4. And the draw, it's rare that it's the same 11 to 4 also for the draw. That seems the most likely conclusion, I would suggest. Well, if you fancy Spurs to beat United this coming weekend, they are now priced at 11-4 to with Betfred. But just taking a look at Manchester City, they return to action on Wednesday night in the Champions League. They're hosting Sport in Lisbon in the second leg of the round of 16 tie. Of course, they enter that game with a 5-0 victory from the first leg. Almost makes it pointless, this second leg, doesn't it? Well, it does. Um... It's probably going to be a case of Guardiola putting in some of his squad players and some of his kids as well. Yeah. Uh, because he doesn't need to do more than just hold what they've got. Or just maybe, even if they lost 2 0, they won't get you know, 3 0, 4 0, and make yeah. a difference. Uh, they're not going to do that, of no. course. But um, I can see like a 1 or 2 0 victory there with uh, all his squad players getting a, a, a turn to impress. In the latter stage of the season, mm. um, so Betfred have City one to seven to win, Sporting well twenty to one to win at the Etihad on Wednesday, um, a draw, which is a, another possibility, um, eight to one with Betfred. Well, if you fancy sport in Lisbon to go to the Etihad, pull off the impossible and get a victory there, they have been priced at twenty to one. Got the outright odds as well for the right. um, Champions League. Uh, Betfred have City nine to four, uh, huge favourites now, um, and that would be the ultimate prize for the uh, Abu Dhabi owners to win the Champions League. Yeah, they could possibly do it without the centre forward, but you still go back to the fact that they do need a centre forward um, at the highest level, and yeah. I clearly don't include Manchester United at the highest <laughs> level sadly anymore. Nowhere there. Um, Liverpool four to one with Betfred to win the Champions League outright again. Uh, Bayern Munich nine to two. Chelsea are in there at seven to one. Um, same as PSG. Uh, Ajax sixteen to one. And then we've got Manchester United twenty to one shots for the only remaining silverware that that very very poor United team run by supply teacher should actually win something this year. Mm. 20 to 1 for the Champions League outright. Um, they, they look like a team that's drifting so, so poorly now. You do wonder where the next victory is going to come from. Um, but you never know with United, they can, they can possibly bounce back. Um, and the Champions League outright price for United with Betfred is 20 to 1. Well, given how badly they're currently performing, do you fancy United to go and pull off the impossible and win the Champions League this season? If you think so, you can get them at Betfred at 20-1. to 1. So we're moving to the National League now because, of course, locally, we have Stockport County competing in that league. And not just competing, but they are the table toppers at the moment. They went down to Aldershot on Saturday, returned with a 2-0 victory, and now they are priced at 1-4 to 4 to win the title. Peter, clear favourites. Do you think they're going to do it? Yeah, I do think they're going to do it. Um, if you look at the bench, as I often do, you can see great strength in depth there. Um, they really do seem to have got it going um, under Dave Challoner. Um, and I think they're going to um, do not only win that league, but do well when they get in the EFL as well mm. because of the, the set-up there, the tremendous fan base. Um, there's a lot of them out there in um, Aldershot. Um, I see they've got a bit of a slogan going with uh, Challoner now. Apparently at the end of every interview he says, Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So they've all got that on um, billboards and whatnot. So, yeah. so they've got a good sense of humour. And mm. I'm sure they'll be 
great when they get back. You know, so you should, they, you, they should really have never been relegated, frankly, no. with that fan base and the great setup they've got at Stockport County. Mm. So I, I'm looking forward to them getting back into the EFL. Hopefully, not at the expense of Oldham, who slipped yeah. back into the uh, relegation. Zone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Stockport do look destined to return to the Football League. However, there's lots of football still to be played. So County are now one to four to win the title. Then Wrexham have been priced at eleven to two. Chesterfield are sixteen to one. Bore and Wood, who have plenty of games in hand, they are twenty to one, and then Halifax twenty eight to one. Well, we're going to look at some Super League news now because it round four continued last weekend. But looking at Salford Red Devils, an awful performance on the day. They were beaten 34-2 at the Huddersfield Giants. Peter, uh, an abysmal performance. But their coach came out after the game and said it could take a lot of positives. I mean, what's going on there? Well, they do talk up the players, particularly in, in uh, Bedford Super League. I've noticed that before. Um, I mean, I was at the Warrington game. And Daryl Powell, he, he was not as critical as I thought he was going to be um, about their performance uh, against Catalans. But he did. He, uh, the, the Salford coach was in kind of out praising them. Yeah. They have had a slightly better start to the season than a lot of us thought, uh, winning two and losing two. Mm. Um, and that's how, it, how he saw it. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, Betfred now have Salford drifting um, for outright um, grand final glory, they're now uh, right out there at fifty to one um, to win the grand final. Saints, uh, Betfred have uh, favourites six to four. They just keep marching on and on and on. Um, they play Warrington this week in the, what should be a fantastic fixture. Um, hopefully, Warrington will up the game and put up a half decent performance. Um, at the Totally Wicked Stadium, and also in, in it's an interesting one because um, Wigan um, they're playing at Catalans, so that'll be another um, humdinger of a performance mm. um, or a game. Um, so Betfred have Saints six to four to win the league um, and win the grand final. Catalans four to one, Wigan also four to one. Warrington they've drifted out to. 5-1 to one now um, to win the, the grand final. And just finally, for all you horse racing lovers, the Cheltenham Festival does begin next Tuesday. That's the 15th of March, over four days. And then, of course, it's the Gold Cup on the 18th of March. Everyone looks forward to it, whether you're a horse racing lover or not. A lot of excitement surrounding it. Uh, and we'll also have a three-page feature in this week's Tame Time Reporter. I know you'll be doing that, so lots to look forward to. Yeah, it's um, something to get our teeth into. It is the, uh, the Grand Prix. Um, Greatest uh, show on turf, as people <laughs> say about uh, Cheltenham. Um, four days of fantastic action there. Uh, I'll be going to the Gold Cup myself on the Friday. Right. Um, and I'm just looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to teaming up um, with yourselves to get this um, three page um, special sorted out for this week's edition.